Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for August 10th. Lots of stuff to talk about today, guys. August 10th blows my mind. It's almost September. When September rolls around, we have one month for what? Yes, Sony VR. And it doesn't matter what side of the fence you're on. You don't have to be a Sony fan. If you're a fan of VR, hopefully you'll at least want them to do well because this first year especially to get that traction to grow this vr market this new market we need all the players to do well there's plenty of time for the infighting later but right now vr has to be successful so that it's around for us moving forward and i can't wait i can't personally can't wait to see that the first news bit has to do with the locomotion system. So Jason Idiom, one of the viewers on the channel, sent me a link from GameSpot that had to do with the locomotion system used in Doom. And it's very similar. The way they worded it, it sounds very much like the raw data one that I reported about two weeks ago in the, in the uh, quick look at raw data as enjoying. It was a system in raw data, you m move your teleport circle and then when you engage it, you get a little bit of that flash superhero run effect and you're there. As if to imply with cybernetic speed or whatever, you made it to that other point across the room. And I like that. Just like I like the hoverboard system, that's what I call it, in Solace Project. Where put your thumb on the trackpad and steer with your HMD it feels like you're on a hoverboard. My only complaint with that, you need to free up head movement, right? It shouldn't be tied to head movement. It should be solely controlled by your thumb on the trackpad. Moving it, like rubbing your thumb in different directions is how you should glide forward or maintain movement in that direction with your thumb. I think that would be great. And I still maintain that every VR game should offer minimum two locomotion systems so that if you don't like one at least you have another option if one makes you more nauseous you have the other one to fall back on so uh yeah interesting article and it's a game that it's gonna be nice to see in the market because like fallout 4 these are big players who are starting to show us virtual reality stuff just like i'm confident for the holiday season we're gonna see some currently under wraps indie games even that are going to blow our minds and definitely some triple a stuff i i just can't wait it's a really exciting time awesome awesome time to be a gamer and in fact today i had that first excitement that i haven't had in a while where the promise of vr is just that christmas morning feeling like when i opened my vive and opened my rift and it was because of a lot of the news stories today and especially this next one, which had to do with VR arcades. And we talked about that yesterday. VR arcades, VR arcades opening up throughout North America. And I talked about it in the past saying, look, this is a great way for people who can afford one to see it, right? To get exposed, try it out. And sure enough, it's coming to pass. And for anybody who hasn't, who doesn't understand arcades, just forgive me for one minute. Take one minute of your time to just explain what arcade meant for us. So if you don't want to see this, skip ahead about a minute. I'll try to keep it to a minute. For us who took part in the arcade revolution, right? The arcade generation. The arcade was a magical place. It was a place where you had so many different games that even the richest kid in your class couldn't afford that many Atari games. And even if he came close, they were Atari games. These were arcade games. They looked awesome. You had a bunch of like-minded people brought together socially, even though, you know, they may be playing single player games, but sometimes it was multiplayer. You had a set of rules. You had awesome noises, immersion. The experience was surreal. And the holy grail of it all, the mighty roll of quarters. 
a roll of quarters to a kid back then was like having Excalibur. It was your passport, your ticket to fun, literally. A roll of quarters, which was exactly 40 quarters, represented hours if you were good. Well, hopefully at least an hour even if you were bad, right? But it represented a significant amount of time that you could spend in the arcade. And, you know, this was the era when arcade machines were expensive. You couldn't afford them. You couldn't afford one, let alone 50. So it's all of that. It's the variety and everything else that made that so special. So with the VR arcades, what we're going to see is similar. There's a couple of different operations that have different takes on it. There's one in Dayton, Ohio. It's called uh, Scene 75 Entertainment. And they have 15 or 10 different Vive games, 15 Vive stations, I believe. You can pay $6 for 10 minutes. You can pay $15 for 30 minutes or $24 for an hour. And that basically gives you an hour of virtual reality. Now, there is some caution. And it's similar to what I mentioned a couple of videos ago where I said I've seen these cycles before. And unfortunately, I've seen this one before too. It's awesome that these you know, VR arcades are, are out there. And you could take what I said before when I said they got to go to the malls to market. They got to do that. I meant that. But I meant that more in a marketing way. I didn't mean that so much as a hardworking person setting up their own store to offer a VR arcade. Because unfortunately, the writing on the wall is going to be if that consumer price point for VR units falls to a certain level, people are going to buy their own virtual reality console or PC and stop going to a VR arcade. And that will signal the end for the VR arcade, just like PlayStation's, Dreamcast, Saturn's signaled the end of the arcade in North America. So it's exciting. It's awesome to get it out there. Uh, I just know it's going to be tough. And, you know, hopefully, hopefully they have many years of success. But my concern is still that uh, the price point will come down. It's going to come down once consumer you know, market segment is there established. The competition, the cheaper parts, it's because those cycles aren't as quick as like video card cycles even. We're talking about not a new model every year. Well, maybe, probably 18 months is kind of where I see it going with VR and the price point will go down. So hopefully these guys can ride that out. But either way, and, and just back to the arcade thing one last time, if you live in North America or you visit North America and you can get anywhere near the Northeastern United States, go to Fun Spot. It Just Google it. You'll see the address. You'll see what it's all about. It's basically the holy mecca of arcade. It is what is left in all of North America, which is kind of sad, of the arcade generation, right? So look it up, Fun Spot, visit it. The next item is a GoPro unit. Now, we all know the GoPro, the old sports. Uh, you know, you could take it in the water. You could take it jet skiing, paragliding, parasailing, whatever the hell, skydiving. Awesomely versatile camera. Well, now we have their version called the Omni 360 of a VR 360 degree camera. Six cameras mounted on this puppy. And it's literally called that the Omni 360 Six cameras retailing $4,999 US. So not exactly consumer price point levels, but maybe small organizations or media firms. It's probably realistically more attractive for that segment than it would be for the home market. But it's a cool looking camera. And it's one of those technologies that if you look at it, it almost looks like a joke. Like somebody just literally stuck a bunch of cameras, put them on a, on a globe and said, here you go. Like it would have been the thing 10 years ago you could have done for Halloween or as a prop. Just take a bunch of digital cameras, put them together and say, look, this thing can film in all directions. 
it doesn't look like it should work. Obviously, the stitching software that's included brings it all together and makes what looks ridiculous, a bunch of cameras stuck together, work. And therein lies the coolness. So it's just five grand is a little cost prohibitive for most of us because that represents a lot of other things that you could buy and definitely would want to buy before. Now, the other area that gets me excited about virtual reality in terms of the gaming genres, and I've mentioned cockpit games before, but specifically is the flight simulator segment. Flight sims were was a genre that I liked at times and then kind of got out of and then would get in again. And there were some great ones. Uh, Falcon 3.0. Uh, I just remember some great, on my Amiga, on the PC, some great Sims. F-18 Interceptor on the Amiga was just, it was awesome. It felt like you were flying around San Francisco, the Golden Gate Bridge, all of that. Wireframe graphics, I don't even think they were shaded polygons. <laughs> But as far as you were concerned, you were flying a plane over San Francisco, right? But for virtual reality, it's a natural fit. And we've talked about cockpit games on this channel so many times. It doesn't need, you know, repeating. But there is a product called Aerofly FS2. And it's a company from IPAX. And it's essentially a high resolution flight simulator. So they claim to have 150 plus Southwest US airports, geography. There was a clip on there. I don't know if it was Reno. No, it was Vegas, not Reno. And it was all lit up and it looked gorgeous. So you basically have a flight simulator with really high res, high definition graphics. It's nice to see that make a comeback. Just like it's nice to see adventure games making a comeback with VR. And... Yet another awesome trait for VR. It has the ability to bring back dead genres, right? And inject new life into them. And I'm hoping the same for the flight simulator market because there was one time, there was a time when high-end flight sims were like the thing to own a powerful PC for. And they went away to the point where you didn't even see stuff get advertised anymore. It used to be Microsoft Flight Simulator was everywhere. Then all of a sudden it was like the only thing and it almost seemed like a special order item, right? So having this uh, this product, take a look at it. I will have the link in the description below. It looks fantastic. They've got a couple of videos there. Uh, take it with a grain of salt until we actually see the finished version. But if they can deliver what they show, I think we're in for a treat. It will take the DCS, you know, the Digital Combat Simulator, definitely up a few notches. All right, guys, that's it for me. That's it for the news today. I am going to start some gaming. I've been jonesing the game all day today. Cheers, and we will catch you on the flip side.